All right, time for another Kingdom of Shadows game. This time it's the Orange Shadow deck, the Martell version. Martell and Kingdom of Shadows together, it's a double dose of lame. Um, yeah, it's a fairly lame deck, I would say. Although, one thing about the Kingdom of Shadows that is nice is you can play it more proactively a lot of times if the opponent is not putting a lot of pressure on you. You can set up combos with stuff like Cat's Paw, Sir Mandon Moore, even like Sir Archibald or Nighttime Marauders, things like that, that doesn't like require them to do things that you then react to, like the way that, well, I don't know, Venomous Blade's another example of a more proactive card, because you can just play it. But for instance, Gaston Gray is in this deck, and this is a very reactive card. This is a card that will create a stalemate where nothing happens. And one nice thing about the Kingdom of Shadows lineup is... Uh, a lot of these characters aren't actually like that. The main one that is is Sir Robert Strong, and he's very good. Uh, but other stuff you can sort of just do. I do have one Shadows Varus in here because I have the Desert Raider to combo with it. So theoretically, even if the opponent has no renowned characters, this can end up doing something and going off. I didn't put him in the other decks, the other Kingdom of Shadows decks, because he's just not consistent enough. But he does... I, I mean, I think I have one game I can think of where he I legitimately just sort of won the game and very well may have lost without him because he killed a Randall Tarly that was, like, going to win the game and had five power on it or something like that. But most of the time, he's not really worth it. So just a one-of because of Desert Raider. And yes, Desert Raider is still worth playing for three gold, which tells you something about the relative power level of the card and, uh, you know, the questionable... This design decision that they made, printing this for a two gold, it's still completely worth playing at three, and honestly might even be worth playing at four, just with the same effect, just because it's infinite military claim soak. That's why it's in the deck, and that's why we only have one Hagen's Daughter instead of three, because why have a claim soak that requires you to pay two every time, when you can have a claim soak that's free, and doesn't require any gold to be paid? So yeah, it's a very similar character lineup. Uh, there must be something different from the Lannister version, because I have Varus, and I know that that wasn't in the Lannister lineup, but I'm too lazy to go directly compare and see what differences there are. I mean, there's no Burned Men, but I have Desert Raiders instead of Burned Men, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, very location-heavy. Uh, I think we've got a lot of economy. Let's see, seven... Yeah, so like, ten economy plus one Water Gardens and three Shadow Cities, which is... This is uh, definitely the best, like, Shadow City deck in terms of the economy effects, because I think 27 characters are shadows. Literally, only Desert Raiders aren't shadows. So this is at legitimately just minus one gold on every character you play, which is pretty damn good. Um, yeah, very nice effect there. And the challenges action is also good. Again, I tried to originally play this with Flea Bottom, but it just doesn't work because you need trade routes, and also... The number of characters that have Shadow normally, without using Assault from the Shadows, that you can then discard into the Flea Bottom pile and have them actually do something is shockingly few. It's like, uh, what is that card called? The Tyrell one. The Shrewd Diplomat is like the only one that's really worth it. Even Maiden of Poisons is just very awkward and difficult to make it work. Because after you discard it out of Shadows, they can see that it's sitting there in your discard pile. And, I mean, you can do it in the middle of the challenge, but, I don't know, there's just not space to put it in a ton of icon removal stuff to go with a Maiden of Poisons. So that's another card that's not in the deck, uh, again, because there's just not really enough support for it, especially since I'm not doing Flea Bottom. Anyways, Starfall and Hollow Hill, familiar cards there, and Gaston Grey. This might should be a uh, Vengeance, not Vengeance for Elia. I guess you could play that if you wanted, but, uh... His Viper Eyes. This should probably be his Viper Eyes, but it's Gaston Grey for now. Maybe I'll change it. Sort of arguable which of those is better. But you do just want to discourage people from attacking or and slash or punish them for attacking. You absolutely want to slow down big renowned characters from just killing you really fast so that you can play a longer game and, you know, get your value engine going. So I think the card works pretty well. And the Iron Bank, always good in these Kingdom of Shadows decks. The Milks, the Venomous Blades. Uh, yeah, I mean, over a longer game, Venomous Blade. It's a little questionable because... Oh, actually, I'm looking at my character lineup, and I only have four Martell characters. 
The only character in the whole deck that I can put it on is Archibald or Desert Raider. Alright, that's probably going to get changed. Uh, maybe I think the next version is not going to have Venomous Blade in it. But what's funny is you only have to draw one Desert Raider. And then, you know, Desert Raider is forever. So I've actually definitely used this multiple times in testing the deck without even realizing that there's only four Martell characters to put it on in the whole deck. Oh, man. Maybe I should just, like, switch out Castle Guards for Starfall Spies or something. I don't know. Uh, but this is probably my favorite meme that I managed to squeeze in is two copies of Patience, a card that I think I've literally never seen used by anyone in any context, and one that always interested me but never really felt like it had a home uh, because it's loyal, so it's uh, a lot more difficult to combo it into banner decks of other factions. But in this deck, I think it obviously works. You can do plenty of dank stuff. It's still sort of awkward and not super efficient because the return to hand is often delayed by an entire turn, but you can do things like bring Sir Mandan Moore out of shadows in marshalling phase, put patience on him, and bring him back to hand uh, that very same challenges phase. So there's no, like, opportunity for the opponent to do anything in plot phase. He's just, he comes in, he does his thing, and then he's gone, and he comes out again next turn. And the patience itself is also non-terminal, so you can just keep doing it, and you can, like, keep using nighttime marauders and things like that. It can, it can do some work. It's okay, I think. I'm um, sitting here trying to think of what's to replace Venomous Blade with. Because this is a lame card. I mean, we don't really need to use this, do we? Maybe Vengeance for Elia? Because one reason I put Venomous Blade in is I wanted cards that power the Water Gardens. Because I, this was, I already was like, well, the Water Gardens is pretty good because of all these higher cost locations I'm running. And I was like, well, if I'm playing Water Gardens, I should play Venomous Blade, right? So maybe I'll play Vengeance for Elia. I don't know. Let's just play a game for now. Testing new cards. No, thank you. We don't test new cards until the new cards are actually released. And Lord knows I don't want to play against Exposed Duplicity. Ooh, a mirror matchup. I mean, sort of. It's Lannister. Uh, let's keep this hand. We've got our, our Shadow location, and we've got multiple economy cards. And we can set up a 3-3 three, three by setting up Hagen's Daughter to sort of cancel out the odd amount of gold for Shadow City. That's handy. So I want to start with Mandon Moore. Yeah, Mandon Moore is probably the best to start in Shadows out of these. Hopefully he doesn't play Hired Assassin. Hired Assassin is so strong in Kingdom's mirror matches. Again, I don't have it in my Kingdom decks because it's just so specific, but if someone does have it and, like, they see two copies of it or something, that could decide the match in their favor in a Kingdom of Shadows mirror match. Oh, we had that set up. He's got his stuff, too. Oh, no, that's Tunnels of the Red Keep. That's not Bowels. Hi. Yeah, Hi. Do we riddle him? Well, if he has March, he's just going to play March, so riddle won't matter. We already have the Desert Raider, so March is fine. Got him. Pretty sure we always want to go second in this matchup. Now I just need a Venomous Blade with my Desert Raider. <laughs> Gaston Gray is going to be pretty questionable in this matchup, because a lot of his cards I'm not going to want to send back to his hand. I'm assuming he won't marshal any characters that are actually on the field, like he'll only marshal things in the shadows. I guess I should go ahead and think about what I'm going to do. I'm going to get, what, five, six, seven, eight? So this dude costs one, then I have seven left, and I can play Castle Guard for four. And then I'll have three left after doing that. 
which will be a Desert Raider. So cast looks like a Castle Guard Desert Raider turn. Works. Yep, this should be correct. One thing that is difficult, I don't know if I mentioned in the first video with this agenda, like one legitimate decision point that it gives you is how many cards to actually put into shadows every turn. Uh, do we just do it? Nah. Because the more cards you put in shadows, the less gold you have available to spend to actually bring your stuff out of shadows. So you really need to sort of calculate before you start spending all your money how much you're actually going to save for the challenges phase and which shadows cards you're going to spend it on. It's not necessarily correct to just spam everything to shadows right away. Come on, do an intrigue. What are you doing over there? Ooh, a Bolson Flare. Darn, my Gaston Gray. Oh, he's going to do zero challenges. He thinks that can save him, but he's wrong. It can't. Oh, I screwed up. Because he has Tunnels of the Red Keep, so he can defend it. I definitely screwed that up. I was supposed to attack with Mandan also. Now his dude gets to live. Not the biggest deal ever. Uh-oh, I could send Cersei back to Shadows. <laughs> I forgot that I could do that. I probably should have done that uh, during the middle of that Intrigue challenge. A little bit of a screw-up. So I want to send the Bolton Flare back. Yeah, then I don't have to deal with the ability. But do I really care if the ability nukes the Desert Raider? I don't. I'll just pick Mandan. So if I didn't have Milk in hand, I would pick Cersei. But this way, if Cersei stays in play, I can just milk her next turn. And I don't have to deal with the ability. He disconnected. That's not good. All right, good. It's like that would be a really weird spot to rage quit. And it's potentially good for him to kill this because I have Varus in hand too. Trade routes right away, of course. Now, 
Not like I won't be doing that when I'm in it on my next turn, but I get my double at the gate, so I get an even bigger trade route, and that will definitely matter with Cat's Paw and Varus around. One nice thing about the Shadow City running three copies is you can put an extra copy of it into Shadows for only one gold and draw two cards. It's a good deal. All right. Yeah, we most definitely want to do this. The question is, what cost do we want to hit? Do we want to hit one? Oh, well, we learned the hard way last time that targeting Poison Coin won't actually do anything, so let's hit one. See what we get. Damn it, got nothing. The Iron Bank will have its due, the Gold Road twice, a Cersei duplicate, two Sir Robert Strongs, and a Knight of Flowers. Interesting. Alright, so this dude costs three, meaning we have two left to spend. What card do we most want in Shadows? Castle Guard, maybe? It's either Castle Guard or Varus. I'm not sure which one. Uh, let's just put Varus. He's pretty much guaranteed to be... Oh, I can do two. That's right. Forgot that they're discounted by one. Do I want Cat's Paw? Let's do Castle Guard. All right. I think I like doing it this way. So he's definitely going to have Sir Robert Strong in Shadows. Just means we have to be careful about uh, attacking with Sir Mandan if we don't want him to get murdered. But hopefully Robert Strong will just kill one of these other four drops and then he's out of the way. What's he going to have in Shadows? Robert Strong, the Knight of Flowers. Those are, that was literally the only stuff he had. He does have Iron Bank, which is unfortunate that he's going to use that on Cersei. And then I guess since he had a second copy in hand... He could even bring her out again. But I think if he wants to spin his gold on that, I'm fine with it. I don't really want to discard this cat's paw, I don't think. So let's go ahead and draw. See if we can protect him. I think I'm just going to have to accept Mandan dying, because it's the only way to do an Intrigue. Do I really want to do an Intrigue that badly? Not really. Tunnels can come out, and it'll give him, like, plus a million. So this is fine for military. Alright, this works. That is going to get Varus. I mean, not this turn, but next turn. He will not be alive. Let's take his power icon. I could have sent him back to Shadows, but again, he's going to get Varus, so I'm fine with killing him. I mean, I'm fine with him staying in play, because I can just kill him, and then he's gone. Don't have to send him back with his Castle Guard. <laughs> he chose to kill a character. I mean, fair enough, that's not, that's not really that good of a character for him to have. Not 
not sure why he felt the need to defend that. He has no power. Well, now I think I pass, because I'm pretty sure the other cards in Shadows are Robert Strong, uh, maybe a second copy of Cersei. That makes sense, actually. That's why he would defend it, and Tunnels of the Red Keep. So I do Intrigue, Mandon dies. So I think now we just pass. Yeah. No reason to make it easy for him. And we're definitely going to do this to try and protect the Hollow Hill. Unless he just passes, but I'm assuming that he's going to use Iron Bank. Well, maybe he's not going to Iron Bank, because if he was going to do Iron Bank and bring out the second Cersei, then you would wait to bring out Tunnels until after doing that, so that you would discard another. If that's what he's going to do, then he screwed up. So maybe he's just going to chill, which I'm perfectly happy with. All right. Do a military against the Desert Raider to get a renown on the character that's going to die next turn. Be my guest. Now I will say, if one of those two cards in Shadows is another Bolton Flare, if one of them snuck past me, it was sitting in there since last turn before I saw his hand, then he freaking got me because Hagen's daughter will die to that. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. Boy, am I going to be salty if it is. Oh no, a castle guard. And he doesn't use the reaction, he just brings a castle guard out of shadows. Well, I'm happy to see that. I mean, yeah, you don't want to put these back in the shadows, so... It seems like he's not going to use that Iron Bank, so let's do this. Set up to kill Cersei next turn. So what I can do is I can do Varus, Castle Guard, Varus again. And that should be pretty decent. And of course, then he'll do more Ghoulis if I pull that off, but I have Hagen's Daughter, Desert Raider, and uh, the Hollow Hill. I can like Hollow Hill, Robert Strong, and stuff like that. Watch him play Varus's Riddle now. <laughs> Valardo Harris, okay, sure. 
Sure thing, buddy. That's not really worth it. I think that was not the not the greatest Valor though, Harris. I lost eight gold worth of characters and he lost six gold worth. Lost like uh two three strength icons, he lost a five strength icon. Very minuscule advantage to him. Quit disconnecting. Come on, man. I'm trying to record. What is this? Fix your connection. Well, let's marshal our cards. Pretty straightforward turn in terms of marshaling. Question is... Yeah, we probably want to just go ahead and do this. Bring Sir Mandan Moore back to hand and put him back in the shadows. Sure, why not? I'm not sure if this is correct, but we'll just do it. It's only one gold. And the great thing is I'm pretty sure Varus counts shadows on both sides. Yet yeah, each other card in shadows, not just your cards in shadows. So in the mirror matchup, he gets really cheap. Come on, dude. Do something or pass. Do something or pass. Come on. Quit making us wait. Oh, no. He marshaled in underhanded methods. Spooky. I want to force him to kneel a character to defend my military, so I'm going to attack with these two. I don't know, if I attack with this, is he really going to rob or strong it? He wouldn't do that. We'll just do this and see what he does. Now, hopefully he defends with the Knight of Flowers. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Feels bad, man. Now he has to Robert Strong this, or else just accept it and play Valor Morghulis.
There it is. Well, we made him Robert Strong a Desert Raider, so I think that was fine. That was probably worth it. All things considered. Now, he, he, we have to remember he has the Iron Bank will have its due, and he can use that on Sir Robert Strong. So he can bring something else out of Shadows. I'm not sure what it would be. Maybe the second copy of Cersei. That could happen. I'll probably... I don't know if I'll Castle Guard that, actually, because if I Castle Guard his Cersei back in the Shadows, it's like kind of gives him a good Valar Morghulis. I don't know. Well, he seems to be trying to hold the board and to, uh... Oh, got the Iron Bank. That could be good. And to not, how do you say... And to not have to play a reset by spending that Robert Strong on my Desert Raider. So let's do this and apply some more pressure. I'm assuming that he'll start discarding for Sir Mandan at this point. Yep, discards two. So if this goes back to Shadows, he gives plus three, and this dude becomes six, which is really annoying because that means Hagen's daughter and Castle Guard cannot get past them together. So let's just do this, I guess. Well, we might as well make him use it, right? It's still worth it to actually just make him use the location. So we can do this. Oh, he didn't use it. Interesting. Not sure if I want to use Mandan more again. I, know I have the three gold. I guess I'll probably use him. Yeah, we can just bring him out of Dominus phase. I can't trigger these, can I? No. I only lost one challenge because the military got totally canceled by the Desert Raider getting murdered, so that didn't count as a loss. That sucks because I would totally sacrifice one of these right now. Oh, he's going to do a challenge. Well, we should probably do this. And it's helpful of him to do this military, because it'll let me, um... I guess I could defend it. I just want to defend it? Oh, it's too late now. I already hit pass. 
I could have brought Mandan out and blocked with 10. But I legitimately don't know if that's even worth it. Hold on, why didn't that count? Oh no, I won the power challenge that I attacked on. That's why. For some reason, I thought I lost that power challenge. Alright, now Cersei's gonna come out and do Intrigue. There she is. Oh, power, that's right. Don't know why I assumed intrigue. Well, let's do this. What's it gonna be? You have to discard too. What is this, my third Mandan? I think it's the fourth. So I brought him out once, castle guarded him once. Regent guarded him, and then Castle guarded him again. So yeah, this is four Mandans. Finally gave in and killed his Castle Guard. That could indicate Valar Morghulis. Not entirely sure. Yeah, I think so, though. I mean, look at this. I think he's going to do Valar Morghulis. This board's too lopsided. No need to use this guy, I don't think. So what if we just draw five cards in preparation for that? I think that's the game plan. Come on, hit apply claim. Uh, this guy's connection, he's lagging a ton. I assume that's what it is because he was randomly disconnecting. Super frustrating. Definitely didn't need two Desert Raiders. I would say Venom... Oh, he brought a card out of Shadows. But where is it? There it is. Darn, he discarded one of these. These are all pretty not that important. Oh no, he got the literal dead card out of my hand. Now we draw the actual good cards. That's lucky. John Connington, huh? John Connington doesn't actually have anything good to combo with in this hand. Let's just get Cat's Paw. Oh, another trade route. It's not a reset. Alright then. So we can combo John Connington with Cat's Paw, maybe? It's a possibility.
We definitely want all of these in the shadows. And so this guy can come out for three, bring out Cat's Paw, and pay the remaining six to nail Cersei. It's not your turn yet, dude. I'm not done marshalling. Don't say thinking on me. So it'll that'll either be the play or Robert Strong. Not sure which one it'll be. Not nah, it's fine, go on. Really not sure what he would have to consider. We're not in challenges phase, dude. This is still marshalling phase. Cycles his dead knight of flowers. Probably a correct thing to do. I think I should have put the patience on... The Regent's Guard, actually. Because then I could bounce the Regent's Guard with Patience and bounce Sir Mandon more. Damn, that duplicate is really unfortunate. With the other Regent's Guard. And then, uh, if that, that would be if I was going to do the John Connington combo. But now I'm not going to do it because he got a duplicate. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to marshal another character some way, somehow. Otherwise, I can still get him with Military Claim. There's one card. Just one card. Well, it's probably some type of character. Not sure what. We'll find out. Could be Robert Strong, right? Yeah, Robert Strong's not dead. Oh, it definitely is Robert Strong because he used Iron Bank, I think. Isn't that what happened? It has to be what happened. All right, so we gotta do it this way then. Yeah, stop kneeling your gold roads, come on. We do this first. I think with the way the board is, he's going to do Morghulis. I mean, he's just going to have to do it. So I'm going to try to keep John Connington in shadows, and Robert Strong's probably not going to have any targets. So I'm thinking maybe I'll use the Cat's Paw. Use that to burn that duplicate if I have to. Oh, it decides to block it. Okay. That's fine. This way I cannot have the challenge stopped by Robert Strong by using two attackers. I should have used the cat's paw for it. That was a sort of a misplay. Then I could do military with these two. Screwed that up a little bit. But yeah, now we can just do this. Does that cancel my discount from my agenda? Like, will the cat's paw now cost the normal Shadow 2 instead of Shadow 0? 
because it's reduced the cost of the first character you bring out of shadows. And like technically I brought him out of shadows. Even though I used the ability instead of paying the gold. I wonder. There it is. He sort of had to do that. Patience. That's a fine card to lose, I think. So the cast cost still costs zero. That's good. I kind of want to draw, but do I really want to discard either one of these out of shadows? Not really. I really don't want to discard them. Because now John Connington can be comboed with Sir Mandon Moore. So yeah, it's not worth it to discard either one of those. I'm unfortunate that I didn't put Patience on this Regent's card. That was a misplay. I mean, it did absorb the Intrigue claim. But these Desert Raiders ideally could have absorbed that. Yeah, there goes one of them. And this is good because this does not give him a good Valar Morghulis since that duplicate is gone. Now if he does Valar Morghulis, it'll be bad for him. Oh, goodness, what are these cards? Just get another cast paw, I guess. Maybe Penny? Yeah, let's get Penny. Stealth power icon. Oh, no, not Clever Faint. Damn it, this is the last card in his hand. Are you serious? Ugh, disgusting. Well, let's play Doharis, I guess. What else are we going to do with our lives? That's one more gold. Still put him first, because I have uh, Dornish Fiefdoms. Well, now he's out of cards. I wish I could say he's going to be low on gold, but he's still going to have, what, 2 plus 5 plus 1? He's still going to have 8. But this is why we saved John Connington to combo with Mandon Moore. And ideally, he's now going to be forced to kill stuff for Mandon Moore. There won't be any more discard option. We also have to consider that we're going to have to reveal our own Valar Morghulis in the next two turns, so we have to think about that. Hired Assassin. No, that's not Hired Assassin, it's the Queen's Assassin. It's a different Assassin. This is the bad Assassin. Hired Assassin is the good one. Oh, he's on 10 gold because he has uh, gold roads. I forgot about that. Damn. 10 gold. Come on, dude. 
Marshal or don't, do something. Gold mine again for old Bill Bone. Don't think I quite agree with that one. He's going to want some cheap dudes to absorb that Mandamore ability. Oh, this is an incredibly slow game, isn't it? Three to four? I probably want to save the John Connington combo for after my own Valar Morghulis, to be honest, with how slow the game is. Just try to play conservatively. Although I can always, uh... Oh, this could be bad. Two? Oh, four. Damn it. Well... That wasn't very good. But what can you do? Now can you hit pass and finish marshalling, dude? Doesn't help that he's slow playing on top of it being a really slow game. Come on, this is ridiculous. Hit pass. Yes, you put a card in shadows. Now hit pass. Finally. Good lord. I guess Penny's not that likely to be active in this mirror matchup. The ability? Probably discard this to draw. But let's wait for him to spend his gold before we do it. Because as long as he's sitting on 5, he can still bring Cersei out. If he brings out any other characters at all, pretty much, then I'm going to, how do you say, do Valor Morghulis. Oh yeah, this fair card coming in. No, my other Mandamore. You serious? I have the worst luck in this game. That would have been a game-winning card if I could actually get it and play it. Plays Robert Strong this thing. Alright, that works. No, I forgot about underhanded methods. Oh well. He could do that on reaction at any point, so probably couldn't really block that one. Get the milk. Yes. Castle Guard, probably? Oh no, we have Robert Strong, so we'll get that.
Yeah, no clever faint this time. This time she's going to die. This time she's going to die. Now, if he's smart, he knows I'm going to do this. Watch him play return to the fields. That'd be mega random. <laughs> the first snow of winter. I mean, that makes sense. That was my. That's my last plot. Is first snow. Come on, top deck, nighttime marauders. Just do it. He has a one cost card, right? He does. Damn. I drew old Billbone. That's my Aegon card, damn it. Oh, Aegon doesn't have an ability. Piece of garbage. Well, Cersei's gone, so we don't have to worry about our hand quite as much. But are we ever going to actually use a Bolton Flare? Probably not. Discard this to draw. Put this guy in. Uh, Robert Strong costs, what, three? Then we'll have Hagen's Daughter. So we can spend one more. More gold mines. Oh no, not the third Iron Bank. Don't you still have Robert Strong? Yeah, he still has Robert Strong in Shadows. I would not have discarded that. That Iron Bank. So since my next plot is First Snow of Winter, I'm not even going to bring out Hagen's Totter. I'm literally just going to pass my challenges. Not very exciting. And if he also passes, then I'll bring out Connington in Dominance Phase. Because now we've seen all three of his resets, so... He cannot punish it. I guess it, his last plot could be March to the Wall. That could actually be a thing. Because what is his last plot? Now that we've seen all of these, what else is it going to be if it's not marched? I don't know. Well, either way, we're passing. I guess we're also doing this. Where's old Billbone? Oh, no. That is a good one. Starfall. See, if I bring this guy out... Yeah, well, I don't want to do this in challenges phase, because then I can't pay for Robert Strong. So, I want to be able to pay for Robert Strong if he can kill anything worthwhile. Come on, dude. This cannot be this difficult. <laughs> Why would you do that? He brought it out before I even passed my challenges. Completely wasted it. 
Well, again, zero planes, so there's still no reason to do anything. I'll just pass. And if it tries to attack, then I kill it. Bye-bye. Again, I'm not going to spend uh, two gold on Hagen's Daughter, because then she'll be in play and get bounced by First Snow next turn. I might spend it if I can actually do Intrigue Claim. I mean, if he does a military, then I might do it. Well, this is unfortunate. There's no way out of this one. I'm not sure which one of these is better to have discarded. I'd say they're about equally powerful. So I don't mind going ahead and trying to defend it. Oh, that's just rude. I mean, that was going to happen sooner or later, so whatever. Do I actually want these guys in play? No, because of first snow. Well, kept the rubber. There's really no point in doing this military, because now it'll just make me win dominance. Watch his last plot be March to the Wall. After all, that would be hilarious with the way the turn worked out. I seriously don't know what it's going to be. Maybe a draw plot? A uh, castle guard, probably, to go with uh, Robert Strong. No, stop it, damn it. Another freaking clever feint. That's obnoxious. It was March to the Wall. He's so lucky he top decked that clever feint. Let's see. What do we want to pick with our nighttime marauders? What are the cards that we don't want him to have? I mean, the third clever feint is probably the number one one that we would want to hit, but they're all three discarded now. Let's pick three in case he has bowels. Where is it? There. Uh, just another Bolton Flare. Underhanded Methods, the Queen's Assassin. 
I want to spend a castle guard to kill that. It's probably not worth it. I think this is all I can afford to do for the turn. I can spend five on John Connington. Or like three on Castle Guard and two on Hagen's Daughter, stuff like that. Yeah, I guess I should go ahead and Hagen's Daughter. Well, let's wait for the challenge phase to start because of first snow and then do it. And three on... So we do three on Castle Guard now, in that case. Because if we wait till challenge phase, we won't be able to use it. Could just John Connington now, but then I'm gonna have to kill one of them for what's his name, Mandon Moore. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna pass. I have a couple ways around Mandon Moore. The number one way being to just draw cards as soon as the challenge phase starts. Oh, you just nuked the Queen's Assassin. Okay. Yeah, I guess it was impossible for that ability to actually go off while he has two cards in hand and I have one. So that makes sense. Jeez, this is a slog. It's five to six. Ugh. When will it end? We're slowly winning on card attrition, though. Like, we have more card resources. <laughs> but that might mean that we deck ourselves first at this rate. Oh, goodness. But not... I should be able to accelerate power pretty quickly if we can actually get a couple turns with, like, control of the board. The issue has been the clever feints. Those two clever feints absolutely kept him in the game. I guess we don't really need to do John Connington, do we? Because what are we going to do? A military and an intrigue with him and Aegon? What's the point? There's no characters, there's no hand. Now let's just bring out Hagen's daughter. Now he can't mandon me. I mean, he can, but it's not really worth it. Let's do this. And I want to castle guard that. Probably not. No! 
He does have the hired assassin. Ah, oh, that's not good. Well, there goes Hagen's daughter. Now he used his robber strong, so he has to actually defend the challenge, and then the desert raiders come in. I'm only going to bring in one, probably, to play around uh, first snow of winter. I really want to use Castle Guard on something, but I mean, I guess I'm not going to use it on any of these. These are. I just don't want to send any of these back. I guess with that being the case, I might as well bring Aegon out of Shadows. Even though he literally doesn't do anything. Then maybe John Connington can go with the Castle Guard next turn. Yeah, shuffle that deck. Super OP ability. the Regent's Guard. Talk about some good top decks. I mean, I guess he has been using gold mines, though. Darn, there goes my Robert. Don't see any others in the discard pile. So yeah, that means there's two more Roberts in the deck of 16 cards. I have a pretty good shot at finding him with the Hollow Hill. And he used that on Sir Manda, not on his Robert Strong. I think that was wrong. Don't think that's correct. Robert Strong is definitely better than Mandan Moore when they have Desert Raiders. What's his plot going to be? I have no idea. Probably just trade routes again, if I had to guess. So if I just like play Doe Harris, how much gold do I get? Assuming he does yeah, I should be able to go second. So I'll get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in that case. Which is like, this is 8, and then I'll have 4 left over for something. Yeah, that's still not as good 
as I mean that's still not enough to play all my stuff because I can use Robert Strong twice. So let's do this and just hope he does uh, trade routes. I mean, surely he's got to be trade routes, right? Yep. That worked out. Alright, I have to go to the bathroom, because this is like a two-hour game. So, I'm going to get to the marshalling phase, and then I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Good lord. This is definitely going to be the longest game I've ever uploaded, I think. To kill something, right? Or discard? We're never going to use Gaston Gray, right? Just go ahead and discard that. Yeah, he did finally draw Bowels of Castle Rock. It did take him a while. Maybe if he starts drawing enough cards off of this, he can actually deck himself before I do. He's five cards behind right now. Let's see if he can catch up. Alright, dude, bring it on. You got no power icons. No more clever feints. Robert Strong and Mandy Moore both in play. You could have another hired assassin. That would nuke me.
Watch him just pass. No, he's going to go for something. Boom, get out. A duplicate? Well, that's annoying. Come on, do a military. I triple dog dare you. What to do, what to do. Well, let's just do this. Maybe we can pillage him to death. We'll, we'll uh, mill him with our pillage on our nighttime riders. That's how we'll win. Oh, yeah. Give me that unopposed power challenge. That's what I'm talking about. And now the trick is if he wins this military on defense, I get a easy guaranteed intrigue win with a desert raider. Again, I think I only want one of them to play around the first snow of winter. I'm not sure that I actually want John Connington. I guess I do, because if I don't use him here... Uh, let's see. Because this guy needs to go back. So what I can do is Intrigue, Castle Guard, and just keep John Connington in Shadows. That might be the play. I don't want to play... I want to keep him in Shadows, like, if I can. Because I don't want to have absolutely everything on the board for the opponent to play Valar Morghulis. And now, do we actually want to kill this with Sir Robert Strong? Not sure if I want to. But I'm thinking probably not. I mean, what's my next plot going to be? Doharis, I guess? So yeah, it's no point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, play your Tunnels of the Red Keep. Come on. Oh, uh, what now? Cat's Paw, maybe? Cat's Paw is probably Sir Archibald, to be honest.
if I if I do trade routes actually, or if I do Doharis, it might not be enough gold. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And this is exactly thirteen, so yeah, it's actually not enough. But that's his second trade routes, and I still have another one. Don't know if that'll matter. Well, he put himself first player. That's a bit weird. Not sure what the idea is there. Yes, yes, yes. Tunnels of the Red Keep. Come on. Oh, he discarded Varus. That's funny. Yeah, keep on gold mining. All right, he officially has less cards in his deck now. Now let's let's make sure we get some pillage going with those nighttime marauders. We can do it. We just have to pillage him to win. The odds are pretty high that he has another Regent's Guard here, aren't they? No Regent's Guard here. Only one dead. So he should still have two more. It's like almost impossible that he doesn't have one right now. But he has to use it. Aw, oh, damn it. Do I even have any other five cost cards in this deck, though? I don't. I literally don't have any other five cost cards. So yeah, he couldn't do anything. He was betting on the third copy of Sir Mandan, but the joke's on him because I only play two. But again, with a uh, Regent's Guard, he needs to use it here in Marshalling. Man, it's unlucky that I haven't gotten that second copy of Patience. Imagine how good that would have been if I still had this card around. Well, that's potentially frustrating. I guess he can discard my Robert Strong duplicate. I mean, I'd rather that he didn't, but oh well. I can survive losing that. There's the Regent's Guard. Does use it in marshalling.
Finally. Look how long he took and how long I'm going to take. I think I'm winning dominance this round. And at this point, that might be what it takes. Just block power and win dominance. And win in like five more turns. Now, I guess that's kind of a problem. No, I can still cock block him with Robert Strong. Can I actually? Not going to be that easy because he has his Robert Strong in Shadows too. I don't know. We'll see. He has to attack with both his power icons, that's for sure. And if he does that, then I can win power going back at him, probably. Shadow Priestess, huh? Yeah, keep drawing cards. Well, he did not do that properly. I guess I could lose this on purpose and bring out a Desert Raider. That's not really worth it. Never did get to use John Connington's ability. Sad times. But I would have if he didn't get that extremely lucky frickin' Nighttime Marauders hit. Discarded both of my cards that combo with John Connington. I guess now I get the Renown. That's still worth it. Now please do a military. Come on, do a military. Triple dog dare ya. Darn, no military. Alright, so if I do power here... He'll kill one of them and block with this dude. So we probably want to do military first. Do we want to bring out Archibald? No. I don't think so, right? I mean, right? He's, he's not actually going to help. So I do military 10. He can block here. So yeah, Archibald's not going to help anything. Yeah, he'd just get murdered. It's probably not worth it.
decides to full block it, which was definitely a mistake. He's now realizing that he can't defend this power challenge. Hopefully he's going to be only uh, 100 IQ and not 200, and he'll use Robert Strong on the Castle Guard, and not on the Nighttime Marauders, who have Pillage. Okay, this works. Ha! I pillaged your pillage. Get out. That was calculated. I knew that was going to happen. Do I even want to discard Sir Archibald for this thing? Probably not, because his ability can be pretty relevant uh, after a reset. Well, we're definitely getting there now, 13 to 5. No! Stop it! Oh, friggin' Robert Strong. Is this a, uh, this last card, is it a Regent's Guard? I bet it is. Because why else would he do this in Dominus phase if that wasn't a Regent's Guard? Oh, what, what now, dude? Bolson Flare any good against his board? Not really, it kills like one thing. I guess it's Cat's Paw. Uh, I guess it's Nighttime Marauders, what I guess it is. I think we can, oh, uh, well, sure, whatever, dude. I don't care. I think if you didn't have this duplicate, I would Valar Morghulis, and his entire deck would just be dead, and then I would win at that point. I have to consider if it's still worth it. I don't really want to do Harris, so I don't want to put these this stuff on the bottom of his deck. If I'm Morghulis... I mean, my entire deck is basically dead at that point, too. Uh, this is pretty questionable, dude. I'm really not sure what to do. It's either more ghoulish or trade routes. I think I'm going to go for the more ghoulish. See what happens. It's not, is it really worth it? It's really not. Let's make him play the reset. Let's just see what happens. Damn, well I don't like him getting the Hired Assassin back. But I'll know that that's what's in his hand, so I should be able to nail it with my Nighttime Marauders, yeah. Unless, can he have another one? You can have the third one, right? Oh, no, they're all gone. Okay, good. So he can't have any more Nighttime Marauders. Patience, that's so good. Yes, it's definitely good that I did not more ghoul list since I drew this. Oh, does he realize? You have three cards left in your deck, dude. If I pillage you twice this turn, you're actually going to lose the game now to being decked, which would be a hilarious way to win. Like, I don't know. I wonder if he has any idea. Like, if he literally just is not thinking about that. Maybe he doesn't know because it's such a rare thing to ever actually lose that way. But as soon as your deck runs out, you lose. 
It's not if you have zero cards and then you try to draw a card. I'm 90% sure that if you just have zero cards in your deck, you lose right then and there. So I think if I pillage him twice, I just win on the spot. Golden Tooth, that's random. Alright, watch how... Oh, he knelt his Golden Tooth. Watch how complex my marshalling phase is. This is super gigantic, big, big brain plays right here. Maximum calculations going on. Carefully considering every click. Why did he put himself first again? I don't think that's correct. I mean, why would you want to go first? In this matchup, it seems like there's basically no advantage to ever doing that. I should be pretty solid on the pillage him to death game plan now. Because Robert Strong is in play. So I don't have to worry about that coming out and killing my dudes. I guess he can cat spawn me. But I, d I think I've seen zero cast paws, right? He's playing this instead, the Queen's Assassin, which is definitely not correct. Yeah, there's no cast paws anywhere in the discard or dead, so I'm pretty sure he just doesn't play that card. No! <laughs> Don't varus me, bro. That's just rude. Oh, I should have put patience on my John Connington. It's fine. No, oh, damn it. Oh, another hired assassin. I should have known. No, how did he know? How? How did he know that that's the one that it was? Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. Ah. He still loses next draw phase. It's still fine. Ah. That's so frustrating. No! I will not allow you to win that Intrigue. It's banned. Kneel that Tunnels of the Red Keep. See if I care. Boom, kneel it. That's right. I don't care. Oh, not my milk. That's devastating. Do I want to block this? If I block it, I can't win power. Oh, unless I just block with Archibald. Do I want to do that? Maybe. Oh man, I'm not sure. Uh, I think we'll just say unopposed and kill the Bolton Flare. That's probably the right thing to do. 
I guess I can just block it, right? See, this is calculated. I defend with this guy, so then I'll get pillage when I win a power challenge attacking with the Nighttime Riders. Calculation perfectly decided. I think I'm going to have 14 power. I should win dominance, right? 4, 9, 9 plus 8 to 22. Yeah, I definitely win. That's right, Pillage, get gg what he doesn't realize is he can actually just Doe Harris and save himself. But hopefully he will concede. That's right, you lost, just accept it. Valar Doe Harris isn't a card, there's nothing you could have done. Got him. Oh man. That last turn. So if I had just actually brought out the other nighttime and not let him kill it with Hired Assassin, which I should have thought, you know, I should have realized that could happen, then I could have double pillaged him here and guaranteed win. What he doesn't realize is if this pillage goes off. He still has one card in his deck. Next turn, he can play Zoharis and he can put Robert Strong, uh, Mandan Moore, and the Regent's Guard on the bottom of his deck and keep these, or even put these on the bottom if he wants to be super safe and try to stay in the game. I don't know if that would have been enough, because I was about to be on 14 power, and he would have lost, what, at least one power doing that? So that, it would have made it, it still would have been hard, but he could have tried that. Well, this is definitely the longest and just overall most ridiculous game I've ever played. Uh, maybe not that I've ever played, actually, but that I've ever recorded, for sure. This is literally a two-hour game. Um, and so it's boring. I don't expect anyone to actually watch the whole two hours because it's just boring to watch two hours of Thrones no matter what it is. But I have to pay this compliment to the agenda. Um, other than the fact that the opponent was slow playing a bit, which is like whatever, it was actually not boring to play. For the entire two hours, it was still kind of a struggle. And I was trying to, you know, there was still a lot of stuff that I could do and I was trying to figure out how to do things as compared to a two-hour game against the old-school attrition martel discard everything decks where there's very very few decision points and it's extremely boring uh, this was a fairly complex game with a lot of stuff going on so fortunately it was not boring in that way so yeah um that's about it <laughs>